What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to my prosthetic tools guide for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So this video will have some obvious spoilers as we take a look at all the various prosthetic tools available to you in the game. We're going to be going through uh, some basic farming to build up on spirit emblems and then talking more in depth about each prosthetic tool and the main use it has in the game. And when it comes to using your prosthetic tools, the first thing to keep in mind is how many spirit emblems you have available. Spirit emblems in Sekiro work very similar to how Quicksilver Bullets worked in Bloodborne, and you're going to need them for any prosthetic tool usage, as well as various combat arts and your ninjutsu, which will be later on in the game. Now, there's a couple different ways to get spirit emblems. You can find them throughout the world, those little um, you know, white figurines that just kind of float around. Uh, you can farm them off enemies, or alternatively, you can go to any idol and just buy them from the Purchase Spirit Emblems menu. Now, one thing I would suggest doing is, uh, before you reach late late game, stock on up. As you can see in late game, they run for about 50 gold a pop, whereas early on they only cost about 10. Uh, but in terms of farming them, I found Sempo Temple to be a great area. For whatever reason, the enemies here tend to have a pretty high drop rate of Spirit Emblems. I don't know if it's because they're humanoid or because they're monks or whatever the case is, but uh, drops are pretty good. So if you're ever going to be farming them, of course, make sure to pop a Balloon. A Mibi Balloon of Spirit in particular will increase the chance of obtaining Spirit Emblems. There's also a couple different things you can do to increase your drop rate, but real fast just to show you a quick farming route here. going to run through here, dispatching these dudes. Now keep in mind as well that, of course, this is endgame, so I'm doing probably a lot more damage than you would be doing. But you can still do this just, you know, being a, uh, a little bit more stealthy as you approach. See all the little white things that fly to me when stuff dies? Those are my spirit emblems. That's what we're looking for. So as you play through the game, the best piece of advice I can give is, you know, if you find an area that seems particularly good at getting these little white things to drop, that's your go-to farming spot. Um, in particular, we're seeing a pretty high drop rate of them right now because I did pop a Mibu Balloon. Uh, without that, you still have a decent drop rate, but with a Mibu Balloon, I find that I can usually get uh, roughly 10 to 15... Um, anytime I'm getting a kill. Another thing to keep in mind, of course, is as you're farming, you can find an area that has decent gold drop in addition to a uh, relatively high amount of humanoids. That's going to be even better for farming because, as I said, you can buy your spirit emblems as well. So, you know, no reason to... If you're trying to get spirit emblems in particular, the main point I'm trying to make here is that you might as well look for an area dense in humanoid enemies so that not only can you farm up spirit emblems, but you can take all the gold that you're accumulating from those enemies and just buy more spirit emblems at the end of your run as well. In general, anytime I'm doing a farming run, I'll usually go um, right up until my Spirit Emblem buff is running out, the Mibu Balloon. Once that runs out, I'll usually just pop an idol, uh, go back to where I came from, and then reset and do it again. Kill this one last guy. Alright, so we started with 270, and to take a look, we can see we're up to 282, so not bad. Uh, quick 3 minute run, netting us 12 emblems. Now the first prosthetic tool I want to discuss in depth is the shuriken. You get this one very early in the game and it has a couple upgrades. The base level of the shuriken simply throws one out. The secondary allows you to hold the right trigger to charge it up, hitting an enemy multiple times. The gouging top upgrade adds in a piercing effect, which can hit multiple enemies. And the phantom kunai upgrade allows it to uh, damage enemies through guard, although it does cost two spirit emblems as opposed to one. Lastly, the Shuriken does have a Lazulite upgrade, but as Lazulite is incredibly late game and expensive at that, I'll let you decide if you feel it's worthwhile getting. So, the main uses of the Shuriken, in my opinion, are going to be for taking out uh, animal-based enemies, stuff like wolves, chameleons, monkeys, and then on top of that, taking out enemies that are in the air. Uh, shurikens in general will usually one-shot any small enemy like a wolf, so it's very, very useful for that. 
And as I mentioned, it's great for taking enemies out of the air that like to jump around. So taking a look at the double bullage enemy here, these guys are really irritating in my opinion. One of the more annoying enemies in the game is they like to jump and hop around. And any time they go up in the air, you can see right there, we're able to hit them with the shuriken and it'll bring them back on down. This also works great for things like, uh, you know, Lady Butterfly. She's in the air, hit her with the shuriken, bring her around down to the ground. The last thing I want to do is show the Phantom Kunai here. You can tap it to throw out, and you'll notice those little spirits, or you can hold it to create a bunch of little butterflies. And while it does cost more, especially if you hit somebody with all of those butterflies, you'll do a fair chunk of health damage to them. And in particular, as is mentioned in the description, this will go through guards. So even against stuff like bosses that are blocking, you can get in some chip damage with this if you're just looking to purely damage the health of the enemy. Next, we're going to talk about the Loaded Axe. Now, the Loaded Axe you get in Hirata Estates, and whereas the Shurikens have more distinct uses with each upgrade, the Loaded Axe is a straight progression-based upgrade. Now, the first one is able to just break shields. The second one has a whirling attack, which will allow you to hit multiple enemies. And then the third one adds a fire effect to the axe. Lastly, the axe also has a Lazlite upgrade, which makes it quite potent. So if the axe is one of your favorite weapons, it may be worth picking that up. But in general, once you get access to Sparking Axe, there's no reason to use either regular or spring-loaded. Now the main purpose of the axe is going to be to break enemies with shields, and we happen to have one of those right here. So just to take out this guy, we can see here this enemy has a wooden shield. Now when attacking a wooden shield, you notice you, you, know, you just bounce off, you don't do a lot, you can't do anything. The axe, however, makes very, very short work of the shield. And it's not just the small enemies, it also applies to these big boys with the shields. However, against the big boys, you're going to want to hold right trigger to the whirling attack to make sure you break the shield. with that broken, you're easily able to get a death blow. The last thing I want to touch on with the axe is even against enemies that are unshielded, it's also an excellent tool to build up posture damage. So, taking this big boy for example, we're going to deflect until we get an open window. You can see just how much posture damage we were able to do there. And on to one of my personal favorites, the flame vent. The flame vent you also get in Harada Estates, and similar to the axe, it has a progressive upgrade system where each flame vent is 100% better than the previous one. The initial flame vent simply shoots out a fire breath. The secondary flame vent you can charge to do a flame blast, which will do knockback and have a higher chance of igniting. And then the Okinaga flame vent, you're able to hold and shoot out a continuous flow of flames. So just to show this as an example here, we're going to be using... Our good old friend Spearbro here, who's been used in just about every uh, every guide video I've done. But so, starting with the regular flame vent. Notice we're able to shoot it. We do some fire. You notice we did some damage, but he didn't catch on fire. Now, now we're going to do the spring load and do the fire blast here. You notice the fire blast did quite a bit more damage, and on top of that, it lit the enemy on fire. Then moving into Okinagas, you're able to tap right trigger, and then hold to continually spray flame, cooking your enemy. Now what I want you to notice in particular there is not only were we able to definitely light him on fire, similar to the blast, but most importantly, we, able, we were able to get a, uh, a few seconds of just interrupt damage on the enemy. He wasn't able to fight back as we kept burning him. Last note of importance I want to touch on with the Flame Vent is the usage of oil. Now, oil can be found throughout the game, purchased from certain merchants and farmed, and oil makes it much easier to light enemies on fire. Even using the basic Flame Vent, which a moment ago you saw was not enough to light the enemy on fire, hitting them with oil, and then using it, you notice the enemy is easily lit a flame. It's also important to note that you'll need to use oil with every time you want to use the flamethrower for this to work. It's not simply, you know, apply oil and keep burning them. The oil is consumed once you light them on fire. Next up in our prosthetic tools, let's take a look at the loaded spear. Now, the loaded spear has two main types of usage. It's uh, good at breaking armor off of armored enemies, which we'll show in a second here. And it's good at taking down enemies that are grouped up. Similar to the shuriken, each spear has a separate upgrade, which can make it useful in its own way. The first one we have up... Aside from the base one, is going to be the thrust type. Looking at him, you'll notice the regular one just has the thrust and the ability to drag or rip armor off enemies. The second has the ability to rush through enemies. The third allows you to cleave enemies. And then the spiral spear allows you to do a corkscrew rush, which can pierce through multiple enemies. Thrust type spear is effective against one enemy in particular and looking to do multiple instances of damage, breaking their posture. 
Cleave Style Spear, which you can probably guess from the namesake, is useful when you're fighting multiple enemies at the same time. Lastly, the Corkscrew Spear is great for when you have multiple enemies lined up at a choke point. The last thing I want to talk about is the ability to pull armor off of enemies. As it says in drag, pull an enemy struck by the spear back towards you and can tear poorly fitting armor from heavier foes. And I think it's important to note what type of enemies this applies to. And in general, it's going to be big boys like this. Now right now you'll notice this guy has some armor on. It looks like it's just kind of roped onto him. And you can see that, you know, sitting here and hitting this guy, we're not really doing too much, especially if you're hitting him from the front. So we're going to wait till he's done this. Hit him with the spear. You can see the armor has now been removed. The armor gone. It's a lot easier to attack this guy. We can get a death blow almost immediately on him. As for obtaining the spear, after you take out Gyobu the demon, you can cross the bridge by the old lady and eavesdrop on two enemies that will talk about fitting armor on a big boy. If you kill them, you'll get a gate key, and you can then go to the Ashina Reservoir and loot the spear from the building there. But moving on to the next prosthetic we'll get, it is the Sabimaru. Now the Sabimaru is used in conjunction with your katana, Kusabimaru, to do multiple quick attacks to enemies, and in addition to that, it can inflict poison. The Sabimaru also follows an upgrade system similar to the axe, where each iteration is superior to the previous one, though the later ones do gain access to a combo change attack. Just to show it real quickly, the base Kusabi Maru, as you can see here, just does a series of attacks. Whereas the upgraded ones, you're able to hit right bumper to switch with your blade at any time. Uh, the main usage of the Kusabi Maru is just quick attacks on an enemy. Uh, enemies where the axe is not going to be a good option because of how slow it is. Kusabi Maru is a decent option for getting multiple attacks and building up poise on the enemy. But you'll notice that against most enemies, it's really not that effective. Now, while there aren't a ton of enemies that the Sabi Maru is super effective against, these blue rub guys it works quite well against. Just a couple of hits with it. You'll notice we already have this enemy afflicted with poison. So, in general, a good rule of thumb is if an enemy is lightly armored or just wearing cloth, the Sabi Maru will work pretty well. Whereas, if they're heavily armored, it's not going to be a very good go-to choice. Having covered all the damage-oriented prosthetics, let's talk about the utility ones. And the first one up on that list is going to be the Shinobi Firecracker. The Firecracker also follows a tier style upgrade system where each one is progressively better than the first. Uh, the initial one simply shoots firecrackers. The second one you're able to do an AoE firecracker. The long spark you're able to do a firecracker that lasts even longer. And then the next upgrade can allow you to do bonus damage after doing the firecracker. But in general, the firecracker has two main uses. It's going to be good when you are surrounded by enemies, and it's going to be good when you're fighting beasts. In case you didn't hear me right there because the goddamn firecracker is super loud. <laughs> I was saying it's great when fighting beasts, things like uh, monkeys, wolves, whatever have you. The firecracker is a great way to interrupt them and buy time. Even against enemies like this, you'll notice that just spamming the firecracker is kind of able to interrupt that enemy, lock them down for a second, making a great, great choice for when you're getting surrounded by multiple enemies. Shinobi Firecracker can be purchased from a merchant in either the Ashina Outskirts or a merchant after the Gyobu the Demon Boss, though I would highly suggest getting it earlier because it'll be helpful for a number of fights before you can get access to the second merchant. Moving on to our next utility item though, we're going to talk about the Mist Raven. Now the Mist Raven you can get in the Hirata Estates area. After you have reached the Bamboo Thicket Idol, you can jump off into the ravine to the left, the, uh, the water, swim all the way down to the end and do a multi-jump to get all the way up. And up there, there is a three-story tower guarded by a purple-robed enemy that will contain the Mist Raven. And the Mist Raven, in a sense, is almost like a substitution jutsu. You can use it right when you're about to be attacked to instantly move in a chosen direction. And it also follows a tier-style upgrade system where each one is progressively better than the last. The secondary version allows you to move after being attacked as opposed to having to time the stance. And the third one, while costing more, allows you to do damage after, uh, after doing the substitution as well. So just to show this, right as we're about to be hit, you can see right there, it looked like we got hit, but we actually took no damage. Using the Great Mist Feather, you can notice that the same thing caused the fire damage. You 
frequency there, we used it after being attacked. And you might wonder, well, what's the point if I'm taking damage? But the main thing is you may want to reposition. So what's great about this tool is you can get hit by the first attack of an enemy, and if you know a big combo is coming up, you can use it as a basically get-out-of-jail-free card. You take one attack, and then you instantly reappear somewhere else. Next up on our list is Divine Abduction. This is gained rather late game, and it's almost impossible to miss. You get it right after you defeat a specific boss in the Sempo Temple area. But the Divine Abduction also follows a tiered style upgrade, and the main gist is you use Right Trigger to gather a... Uh, vortex around you and then you use it again to spin enemies around leaving them vulnerable to a death blow. Uh, the secondary version gives you two charges and then the third version in particular which is very very nice here golden vortex uh, allows you to get extra money and items off of enemies. So just to show this thing in action here I have this enemy and I want you to pay close attention to how much money we get off of them as well. Go spin them on around and death blow. See, right there, we netted 124 gold. By comparison with the Golden Vortex, still the same enemy. You'll notice we got 248 gold. So, even though this is an expensive upgrade and it's rather late in the tier, uh, I really do feel it's one of the ones that you should try to work towards as soon as possible because it is going to help a lot with farming. And getting this is going to allow you to farm up the money that you're going to need to upgrade your other prosthetic tools a lot easier. Next up on our list is the Finger Whistle. This is another very, very late game ninja tool you get after killing a certain boss. The Finger Whistle also follows a tiered style upgrade where the first one is able to attract attention. The second one is able to produce a delayed sound so you can basically lure an enemy to a specific area. And then the third one, Malcontent in particular, is very effective against apparition type enemies. Uh, honestly, this is probably the best item in the game when fighting anything that's an apparition because it will lock them down, stunning them, allowing you to damage them. So just to show this one with the finger whistle, the uh, base finger whistle here, we have this guy locked on. We will use it. See how the enemy is now wondering what that noise was and he's looking all over for us. And the main reason for something like this is you can use it to lure enemies on over to get a death blow. Using the Mountain Echo version, notice I can lure the enemy. Silent whistle. I can wait right here. You can see the icon there. And when the whistle goes off, the enemy decides to go and investigate and figure out what it was, but he's going to get lured over to that spot where we did the whistle. Unfortunately, I don't have any apparition-style enemies left at this point in the game, so I can't really showcase malcontent, but just let me say that, like I said, this thing is incredibly useful when you're fighting apparition-style enemies. And last, but certainly not least, the Loaded Umbrella. Now this is probably my personal favorite out of all the prosthetic tools, certainly my favorite out of the various utility ones, but the Loaded Umbrella is a defensive based tool which effectively just shuts down damage. Uh, the base umbrella you can create a shelter with, or you can hit right trigger the moment an enemy attack lands to deflect it. It is also uh, easier to deflect with this compared to your sword, so in a sense it's like a... Uh, it's very similar to like a parry shield from Dark Souls, it just makes the timing larger. But the Umbrella in particular has three distinct upgrades. The Magnet upgrade, the Phoenix's Lilac upgrade, and Suzaku's Lotus upgrade. Suzaku's Lotus will allow you to prevent fire damage and stop burn up or stop build up of burn. The Phoenix's Lilac stops apparition style damage, so anytime you're fighting those uh, ghostly enemies. And then the Loaded Umbrella is just particularly useful against gunfire. So just to show this baby in action, right now we are here at the gun fort. Being shot by a bunch of enemies with rifles. And here you don't even need to worry about it. You just, you know, hold your umbrella out and be like, do 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 do. Jump on over, pull the umbrella back out and just keep on moving. And that's what makes this such an amazing ability. We're able to just, you know, just put on our little hat and walk on through without ever worrying about a thing. Loaded Umbrella can be purchased from the Black Hat Badger Merchant, and you'll find it as you make your way down towards the Great Serpent Shrine in the Ashina Castle area. If you don't pick it up from him early on in the game, it is found lying there later in the game, though I would highly suggest buying it early because it is invaluable. Additionally, I want to point out that the upgrade version, while you have the umbrella spread, while you're in shelter mode, you're able to tap the left bumper to deflect attacks. So just to show this in effect against this enemy here. You can 
can see just how easy it was to just sit there, deflect every single attack he did, and get an easy death blow. Really a tremendous, tremendous prosthetic tool all around. But that's going to wrap things up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the guide on prosthetic tools. Um, I think one of the things I love so much about this game is that each tool does have a very distinct use that makes it fantastic in its own right. And when you decide to weave in each tool for each situation, the game really feels good. So either way, thanks for coming by. For more help, definitely make sure to check out the 100% walkthrough. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys next time.